over at least the past 200 years, um, medicine has become very reductionist. Um, we have many specialty areas, uh, many disease categories. Um, I wonder if you can comment on how that this might have to change as we move into a more personalized era for medicine. Well, I, I think, first of all, all these specializations are very valuable because they produce a lot of valuable insight. But um, there's another side of the coin. We, at the end of the day, have to reintegrate it. And especially, uh, we have to understand that uh, reality is, is more than its uh, factual footprints. Um, I'm often telling my students the following metaphor. Just imagine there is somebody who wanders through a field of snow. And you can now analyze the traces very well in home and, and uh, do all that. But uh, as long as you just focus on the traces, the, uh, the reductionist facts, you get never to see the wanderer. So in addition to the factual traces of the taking place of reality, there is also the actual taking place. And that's what we have to think about specifically when we deal with human living beings. So I wonder also, you're a philosopher, and <laughs> <laughs> philosophy and science many um, hundreds of years ago were very close, closely connected. But over the years, um, they have not been so. Um, I, I think. Um, there's a, a connection to be made now between philosophy and science that can help us move forward. And in particular, I wonder if you can talk about how a philosopher might help us deal with the complexity of the data that we've got because of our reductionist approaches for so many years. Um, I think philosophy can help uh, in two regards at that point. Um, one is the major principle of philosophy is to become aware how we think about a problem. Technically, we call that categorical reflection. So we reflect the cate categories by which we describe a problem. And this is often forgotten in modern science. Um, so um, re-enabling um, our colleagues um, to become aware how they address their problem and by the, in this way also shape it and also <coughs> to a certain degree constrain their search, search space. Um, that is um, what philosophy can bring to the table. And secondly, I think uh, specifically now in terms of dealing with complexity and uh, phenomena like emergence or so, there's a lot where um, uh, the today uh, mainly used or pr predominant categorical setups are inadequate to the topics they are addressing. And there maybe again philosophy could help. I wonder if you can uh, identify a major challenge for us going forward in personalized medicine. Well, I think the biggest challenge is um, to come to grips with uh, constellations. Um, no good um, medical doctor sees his or her um, uh, patient just as a list of symptoms, but as a constellation. And um, constellation means that there's a mutual unfolding of the meaning of the components of the symptoms. They only gain their eventual meaning in that very configuration. Um, so we have to learn how, how to deal with that. Um, closely related to that is an issue which we call technically OCD, optimal cognitive distance. Whenever we think about a problem, um, we uh, have a certain cognitive distance and we can var vary that and change it. And um, uh, uh, prejudice today is that we always get better insights if, if we home in closer, but that's not always the case. Sometimes zooming out is equally or more important. And um, these cognitive skills, I think, specifically when looking at these masses of data which we are getting in personalized medicine, are quintessential. So my answer would be um, the make it <coughs> or break it to personalized medicine is dealing with the cognitive challenges.